today. Um, Britton's going to go over Ecobee setup. Um, there's a lot of just around that to making sure that we're setting it up correctly from the start, um, as well as going over staging. So um, specifically when we're either oversizing systems to allow first stage to run a little bit longer, um, or when it's a single stage, just so making sure that the runtime is set to run uh, longer and not have so many cycles. So we're always consistently controlling air. What it's going to do is also just watch out. It's on, um, it'll kind of fake the threshold, so it'll be slower to change. So, Burton, floor is yours. Well, first things first, make sure you read the manual when you put it in. Because there are plenty of things that are in there, especially with Linuxes regarding airflow and things. Different speed taps, because if it is oversized, you're still going to want to make sure that you get it to... Well, I guess example today would be two and a half ton condenser, three and a half ton air handler. So let's get started. All right, this is a little different. I guess so. So usually it'll always be single or variable speed. And next, I'm not sure what this is going to let me do, obviously. We'll do the accessory dehumidifier, especially if we have a two-stage system. Uh, what's the relay state when you have a dehumidification system? It's open. <coughs> open. Oh. Why? So, that's a good question. Why? It's calling for 24. On um, what terminal? ACC plus. Where at in the air handler? What jumper? All right, so when the jumper's on, it's closed, right? To when we remove it off, it turns into an open relay, an open switch. So when it drops that 24, and... We'll always want to set up Wi-Fi when we're doing this, but when this comes in, we're going to skip it. I didn't play with this one yet. Oh, my... That's fine, that's fine. All right, <coughs> setup's complete. I'm gonna skip the test right now. And then we'll go into the menu here. So system-wise, if you have the <coughs> ACC Plus going, you're gonna wanna turn that on. And then you'll set the humidity level for it. What is an acceptable humidity level? I usually shoot for around 52 to 54. Sorry, this is not very exciting here. All right, so preferences. One of the first things you want to do, <coughs> go into preferences, and hold act action is one of those. So you always want to change that until you change it because then they'll have the problems that they have with the nest where it just randomly will change temperature. And then installation settings. So equipment wise, you'll actually go into the humidifier here. Your minimum runtime delta, you've always wanted to put that down to 2%. So that will reduce short cycling and the humidity will go down 2% right there. Next one, heat is no and the active is open. In the other ones, it will ask you if you want to dehumidify with fan, and you turn that off also. You don't want the fan anymore. <coughs> so going off of what he was talking about with the staging, there is a configure staging on here that you can actually do manually. But this one doesn't have all the stuff on it. So on the other ones, the, the fancy ones, you can actually configure reverse staging. And what that'll do is actually add runtime to your first stage instead of your second stage. So it'll run longer in first stage before it needs to go to second stage, which helps a lot with more of a humid environment or if they're actually there on the water or it's an oversized system because he will up at a stage or at least a ton on some of these. Because Shane and I had an example of that where we did the horizontal. Smaller house, but I think we put a four ton in there and it probably only needed about a three ton. So by doing reverse staging, it'll give you longer run times, more dehumidification too. Unfortunately, that's not really on here. 
probably just been on all the wires and that. Right yeah. Now. But overall, I mean, the biggest thing you need to pay attention to with the especially two-stage equipment is the pins on it. So Carrier has that nice board there. Make sure you set the tonnage right. Uh, I believe HP Comfort will give you about the 350 CFM per ton that's needed there. Usually do white and enhance, which I can't remember what that actually does, but Max told us to do that. So what Max said was right. But just really dial that in just because <clears throat> there's a lot of information there and a lot of things you can do, but <clears throat> the more you read, the more you'll know. Um, also with the Linux fan tables, looking at that and understanding how to read those. So it comes with uh, four fan speeds and then four uh, fan pin settings. So it'll have you know one through four and then plus normal minus. So you're gonna have 12 different numbers. So looking at your total CFM 350 multiplied by your tonnage, you'll be able to then get your benchmark for your CFM. So for a five ton, you're at uh, 1500 roughly um, so when we're shooting for that or 1750 when we're shooting for that number we want to say okay where where is Linux falling in that and if we're at you know 1900 on one with the plus um, 1770 for normal or you know 1400 for the minus of course we're just doing that now off of the fan setting it's gonna have the plus at the top normal at the third minus at the second and then there's a test the test is just to test it on to make sure the blower motor is not failed um, is it the board not sending it or is it the motor that's just for diagnostic purpose so there's four slots so don't get confused on that it's the first three from back to front that you're going to go plus normal minus um, so making sure we're doing that and not just adjusting um, you know how we do with the carrier of move it from you know three to two or one to two because that two slot is still not the same CFM. Go off of the fan table and the manual, um, and you can really correct it by the plus normal minus rather than moving any other jumper. Um, so that's all I have for the Linux that I'm seeing that's different for sure. Yeah. The CBK air hangers, when mm -hmm. you're doing them, mm -hmm. it takes about five minutes to get 24 volts to the thermostat. Mm -hmm. So if you click it on and the thermostat is blank, don't freak out. The only thing that's going to run is the floor fan and the air handler. That's with the 454 systems. Why is that? Uh, I guess to dissipate any gases that might be in that air handler before it kicks on and it trips the, uh, the sensor on it. So we get enough the breakers off, so I guess the sensor wouldn't be testing it, so it's just a fail safe. Mm -hmm. Um, we're still working through some zoning. Um, Gil had one um, that even the way they told us to wire it just was not working properly. So we just honestly we bypassed it behind, wire nutted, right to common. We're going to work through it. When I called Linux, and they didn't even have answers. So they were kind of just shooting off their heads as well. Um, a lot of this literature was printed before the systems were even ready in production. So they're behind the eight ball, so we would be subject for some changes probably this midsummer. Um, I did follow up with Carrier. The FJ5's motors should be good. We don't need to be changing those. I know we haven't been, um, but I just want to give you guys clarity. FJ4's, if there are any that we ever install, we're still doing motor swaps. FJ5, the new 454's, we should be okay. Um, we are finding 454 is also taking a lot longer for charging. Um, as well as collectively, everybody has said that, you know, Evan has wondering, same exact measure quick app, Brayton will have the same app up. He has zero sub cool, Brayton has 10 sub cool. So I would encourage that everybody across the board do an update to make sure we're all updated with the same version because that could be a version issue. Um, I know people don't like to do it, but you're on Wi Fi, it'll be quick here. Um, so just get that done before we get in the field so we can hopefully not have these weird readings or potential really overcharge. Um, yeah, a lot of little things that we're, we're picking up, but this is where this and install tech talk is it was really good for us to get that information out. It's got AI now. Oh boy. And it has AI now. Make sure you set it up to 454B also. Thermostat setup is, is one of our uh, <coughs> biggest, so again, the encouragement is there's 100,000 things that you guys have to do on site. But one of the, that's one of the most critical steps um, because that's our client experience. 
Um, additionally, um, one of the one of the one of the phone calls that I handle often, I want to talk to a manager, um, and so we have we have a chat. Um, when it comes to the thermostat, these Ecobees, it is an awesome upgrade. One of the problems with having a whole bunch of data, having a whole bunch of like technology, is maybe not understanding necessarily what's going on. Well, my old one, uh, you know, read, and then it turns into a phone call. You don't want them out there. The service technician doesn't want want to be back out there. So go over it. But one of the one of the best things that I've uh, found in explaining kind of like the ecobee and humidity levels and this and that um, you know clients can kind of get like a perception of what they think based on data that they don't know how to interpret and how they they don't know what to do with it um, so explain that you know um, this might be a little bit more sensitive um, or it might be reading a lot better than that previous thermostat oh my old system used to be this way whatever but I would encourage you to chat with your client. Um, ultimately, we're doing this because we want them to be comfortable. So um, encourage them, take the next you know, couple of days, the next couple, next week, whatever, to just kind of figure out where you're comfortable. Um, don't necessarily pay attention to what the thermostat <coughs> says, but are you comfortable? Are you comfortable in your own home? So again, we have different numbers, different measurements. They have no idea what the humidity means. Um, have that conversation with the client. Are you comfortable? And then make adjustments from there. Um, it's just a, an, an excellent way to avoid that callback, especially with some of our older clients um, that with that new fame dangled technology, um, it might be a little bit of a learning curve, a little bit of a struggle for them. Um, but just make sure that you're going over that. And then comfort is the focus, not necessarily the number. Are you comfortable? Thanks for watching. If you're willing, Give this video a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of our future videos. And as a quick reminder, HVAC School isn't just a YouTube channel. Dive deeper with us at our main website, HVACRschool.com. Curious for more knowledge on the go? We've got you covered. Tune into the HVAC School podcast available on all your favorite podcast apps. And while you're at it, join our thriving Facebook group. Also, don't miss out on our free mobile applications available for both iPhone and Android. We're all about community. Vortex. Bytex.